गुड इवनिंग सर सर दो सर ऑनलाइन आर एबल हियर नहीं शेल वी गेट स्टार्ट ओके सर ओके लिसन सो द प्रीवियस क्लास वी डिस्कस द कॉन्सेप्ट रिलेटेड टू मैक्सिमा एंड मिनिमम right so what was the condition for maxima or minima so condition for maxima or minima what is it f dash of x is equal to 0 so after you solve this what will you get you will get the values of x as c1 c2 so on till cn let's assume there is there are n values right so after this what are we supposed to do you need to do the second derivative after that substitute the value of each critical point that you get so if at that critical point if the second derivative comes out to be less than 0 then ci is said to be a point of maximum if f double dash of ci is in such a way that it comes out to be greater than 0 then ci is said to be a point of minimum am i right okay oh. so this is the overall concept that is needed to solve the problems in this exercise having said this shall we get started solving with the problems so tell me what is the first question So, what is the first question? F of x is equal to so. The first question is f of x is equal to two x minus one the whole square plus three. What are we supposed to find? What is the question? Find the maximum and maximum. And minimum values is equal to what? Okay. So listen. So first is find f dash of x. So when you find f dash of x, it comes out to be two into two x minus one. Into derivative of two x minus one is two, right? So you get four into two x minus one. So this is the value of f dash of x. So for maximum or minimum, f dash of x is equated to zero, which implies four into two x minus one is equal to zero. So what is the value of x? 
x comes out to be half right so this is going to be the critical point so what is going to be the value of f double dash of x f double dash of x is going to be 4 into derivative of 2x minus 1 is 2 so it is going to be 8 so since the second derivative is greater than 0 irrespective of u substituting the half or not what will happen is x is equal to half will become the point of minimum so it become the point of minimum okay so the question is they don't want at which point it is attaining the maximum or minima they want the value at that point so what we are going to do is you will find f of observe for you to find the minimum or maximum value what you need to do is take the critical point and substitute in the function don't substitute in the first or the second derivative when you take that critical point and substitute in the first derivative you will get a zero when you substitute it in the second derivative you will get this value so always substitute it in the function itself so when you do that f of how much should you substitute half so when you substitute half here the answer will come out to be 0 plus 3 which is 3 itself so the answer is 3 and it has only minimum value it does not have any maximum value it is obvious from the question i'll tell you how okay observe it is y is equal to 2x minus 1 the whole square plus 3 right so when you open up when you when you square and open it what is the coefficient of x square that you are going to get you will get 4 which is positive so whenever the coefficient of x square is positive you get an upward parabola okay so here what happens is if i draw the graph for 2x minus 1 the whole square if i draw only for 2x minus 1 the whole square not for plus 3 if i draw only for 2x minus 1 the whole square this graph will be an upward parabola where it is shifted to the right by half unit where it is shifted to the right by half unit so you will get something like this this is the graph for observe 2x minus 1 the whole square whereas if i want for 2x minus 1 the whole square plus 3 okay one minute there is a correction here sorry so the graph will get shifted to shifted by half unit to the right so it will be like this so this value is half comma 0 so what is this graph for this is the graph for 2x minus 1 the whole square but what is the actual graph you need what is the actual equation it is 2x minus 1 the whole square plus 3 so this should get shifted upwards by 3 units when you do this you will get the graph like this and where is the minimum value attained the minimum value is attained at half and what is the value of it the value of it is 3 that is what has happened in this problem so critical point is x is equal to half and the minimum value came out to be are able to understand the meaning of this so this is the relation between the theoretical one and the graphical representation please make a note of it
Sir, your voice is not audible, sir. Is it audible now? Yes, sir. Okay. So it is going to be eighteen x plus twelve is equal to zero, which implies if I take the six outside, then what will I get? I'll get three x plus two is equal to. So which implies x is equal to minus two by three. So x is minus two by three, but we don't know whether it is a point of maximum or minimum. So what are we supposed to do? Find f double dash of x. F double dash of x in this problem also comes out to be eighteen. So since eighteen is greater than zero, it is going to be again a point of yes. Now the question is the value of it. So what? How do you find the value? F of how much should I substitute? Minus two by three, not eighteen. You will substitute. Minus two by three. So when you take this minus two by three and substitute it here in the question, so you get nine into minus two by three the whole square plus twelve into minus two by three plus two. So what will you get? Nine into four by nine. This will cancel this four times. So minus eight plus two. Nine and nine are gone. So four plus two is. Six six minus eight is minus two. So this is going to be the minimum value. Okay, and the logic is observe. Again, if you observe this question, it is a second degree equation. It's a second degree polynomial. And what is that we need to check for? Check for the coefficient of x square. Since it is positive, this will also be an upward parabola. So whenever you have an upward parabola, that problem will have only point of minimum, because for upward parabola to come, it has to first decrease and then go increase. It has to come to the, it has to dip and then go up. Is that clear? So it is called as a valley as well, right? Come down, go up, right? When this kind of a scenario is there. You will have only minimum value, and in this problem, the minimum value comes out to be minus two. So, how to find that? How to validate that that thing even without differentiating? Okay, I'll tell you a method. There is an alternate way to solve this. Okay, if suppose the same problem comes in MCQ, you need not do this much. If you recollect the concept of completing the square, okay, it is from your tenth grade. Quadratic equation. It is a concept of completing the square. It is not required only for this chapter. You need it in integration also. So better we learn it here. So for completing the square, what you need to do is first make sure that the coefficient of x square is one. So for coefficient of x square to become one in this problem, I need to take that nine outside. So when I take the nine outside, I get x square plus. Twelve by nine x. Okay, I leave this two as it is. I'm not going to disturb that. The constant is left. So nine and two, I'll observe only this term. So since the coefficient of x square inside the bracket is one, I'll write this as x. Okay, since this is having a positive sign in between x square and x, I'll put a plus here. Okay, x plus. So actually, what you are supposed to do is why we call it as completing the square is you will write this as a perfect square. So x plus something the whole square. That something should be half of this coefficient value. So what is half of twelve by nine? It should be six by nine. Okay. Plus two minus. You need to subtract this value. Okay, so how much will that value come out to be? Sub, sorry, subtract the square of this value. So how much will that value come out to be? Thirty-six divided by eighty-one. Okay, I'll I'll do one thing. I'll explain it with the constant because there is some other thing you need to do it here. Let's take the constant into consideration. I'll come from the beginning. C.
So I'll take that nine outside. So what do you have? You have x square plus twelve by nine x plus two by nine. Right. So nine into you will take the first two terms. You will write them as x plus six by nine the whole square. Okay. So x plus six by nine the whole square plus two by nine minus the square of this value. How much is that? Thirty six divided by eighty one. Okay. So nine into x plus six by nine the whole square plus two by nine. I can write it as eighteen by eighty one. Right. So what will you get? What will I get here? Minus eighteen divided by eighty one. So nine is there outside. So multiply that nine back. So what will you get? Nine into x plus six by nine the whole square minus nine into eighteen by eighty one minus two. No, you got this. So the minimum value will be this number. That will be the minimum value. Because what will happen is at the point x is equal to, so you know where, what will be the critical point. You need to equate this to zero for you to get the critical point. If I write x plus six by nine is equal to zero, then what is the value of x? X is equal to minus six by nine, which can also be written as Are you able to understand? So both can be related. Done with this, I can copy this. So, what is the name of the second method which I told you? It's called completing the square. Actually, if you observe the previous problem, right? Just a minute, observe. In the previous problem, if you observe the equation that they have given is already with completing the square. That is why what will be the minimum value? Looking at the question, you can tell. Forget this part. Three should be the answer. That's what you got. Similarly, what should be the critical point? Equate this to zero. X should be half. That's what you got. That's how it works. So, are you able to understand that algebra and calculus are actually related? Yeah. Shall I proceed? Yeah, you're copying. Those are online. Shall I proceed? 
sir. Yes, sir. Okay. You still copy? Okay. Can you tell me what is the third question? Hmm. Hmm. So third one, tell me, f of x is equal to minus of uh, plus 10. Okay, even before we solve the problem, can you look at this and tell me what is going to be the critical point? x is equal to 1. So, what is going to be, is it going to have minimum value or maximum value? It will have maximum value. It will have a maximum value and that maximum value will be 10. How did I say maximum value? Because the coefficient of x square is minus. So, it will increase and then decrease. It will reach a peak. See, you have a minus here. When you expand it, you will have x square plus 1 minus 2x. So, coefficient of x square is negative. Negative means maximum. Okay, downward parabola. Now we'll start using calculus. What is f of x? Minus 2 into x minus 1. Right? If I equate this to 0, then I'll get x is equal to 1. Right? So what is f double dash of x? f double dash of x is differentiate the same thing. So minus 2 into derivative of x minus 1 is 1 minus 0. So answer will be minus 2. Since f double dash of x is less than 0, at x is equal to 1, it will be a point of, it will be a point of maximum. So, what is going to be the value f of 1? So, when I take this and substitute it here, this will become 0 and you will be left out with 10 and this is going to be the maximum value. I hope it is clear. Right. How many problems did it? Oh, total in total. Shall I proceed? Shall I proceed? So, what is the answer for the next one? Listen. So, let's look at the fourth problem. What is the question? f of x is equal to x plus 1. Okay. g of x is equal to x cube plus 1. I will come from the beginning. Fourth problem, g of x is equal to x cube plus 1. We need to find the maximum or minimum value. It is very simple. First, what we do is find g dash of x. So, g dash of x will be 3x square. So, equate it to 0. You will get the value of x as 0. So, what is g double dash of x? It is going to be 6. So, since 6 is greater than 0, x is equal to 0 will be a point of okay, it is 6x, sorry. It is 6x. Okay, then I have to correct it. So, 
So we'll find g double dash of x, which is going to be six x. So when you substitute x is equal to zero here, g double dash of zero will be a zero. So g double dash of zero being zero, x is equal to zero is neither a point of maximum or minimum. It is a point of inflection. Okay. Yeah. So make a note of this. Shall I proceed? Sir? So we'll see the second problem. Yeah. Tell me the question. So f of x is equal to mod of okay. Minus one, so mod of x plus two minus one. Okay, so here, if you observe, the answer will be for critical point it is minus one, and it will have a minimum value of minus one. Sorry, critical point is minus two. Critical point is minus two, and it will have a minimum value of minus one. It is. Exactly similar to what happens in parabola. Only difference is for a parabola you will get a U shape. Here you will get a V shape. Okay, right. So how to solve this? Okay. So how do you do f dash of x for modulus function? See, f of x is equal to mod x. Then what is f dash of x? It is actually mod x divided by x. Okay. It is then you will get minus one, zero, or plus one. Okay. It is mod x divided by x. But okay, you need not worry about this. All that we need to know about this problem is how to write the function. So how should I write the function? F of x is equal to. Tell me. So it is negative of x plus two minus one when the value of x is less than minus two. Why less than minus two? I need to equate. Oh, no, no, not critical point. I told the answer directly. Okay, it has nothing to do with critical point. It is a definition. Okay. Similarly, it is minus one for x is equal to minus two. It is x plus two minus one for x greater than minus two. Okay, so what will the answer be? This is minus x minus three. Here it is minus one. Here it is x. Plus one. Okay, so this is going to be for x less than minus two. This is going to be x is equal to minus two, and here it is going to be x greater than minus two. So here it is difficult for us to proceed with differentiation. If at all you need to differentiate, you need to differentiate all the three and then equate it to zero. Okay. So which will be a see for example if I differentiate this, it's very simple. See if I differentiate this, what will I get? Minus one. So f dash of x should be equal to zero for minimum or maximum. What am I getting here? Minus one. So there is not a point of minimum or maximum because it is less than minus two. It's not an exact point. What about this one? What about the third one? If I differentiate, I'll get plus one. One is not equal to zero. So where do I get f dash of x to be equal to zero? No, no. I get it at minus two because if I differentiate this function, 
then f dash of x comes out to be zero at x is equal to minus two. That is a critical point. Okay. So since you have minus two, take that and substitute it there. X is equal to minus two. If you substitute it in the function, what will you get? Minus one. Are you able to understand? So listen to this. If this kind of a problem comes in exam, if it comes in MCQ, you can directly use the logic to write the minimum or maximum value. So remember, whenever you have mod of cap, uh, sorry, mod of x, then the graph is going to be like this. It is a V-shaped graph. Whereas when you have negative of mod x, then the graph is going to be inverted V. It will be inverted V. So whenever mod x has a positive coefficient, mod of x plus one or mod of x plus two, whatever it is, whatever is the modulus value, if the coefficient of it is going to be positive, right, then it will always have a minimum value because the graph will be an upward V. It will be like this. Whereas if the coefficient of mod x is going to be negative, then it will always have maximum value. Because the graph will be like this. So I told you, you know the concept is similar to parabola, except the fact that instead of u, you have b. Okay. So did you understand how I found the critical point? So to find the critical point, what you need to do is equate the modulus value to zero. What will you get in this question? What is there inside modulus? X plus two. Equate it to zero. X is equal to. That's the critical point. Okay. Substitute that minus two back in this. If you substitute minus two back into this, what will you get? Modulus will become zero. Only thing you are left out is minus one. That's the minimum value. Did you understand? So first, even before you copy, right? What are the next set of problems? Are they based on modulus only? Okay. So second one is there. Now, can you tell me the answer? Even without solving this, by looking at it, can you tell me the answer? Critical point is minus one. Value is three. What value? Minimum or maximum? Why? Why maximum? Because modulus has the negative before. It will be an inverted view. You can check the answer and see once. Yes. Okay. Yes. Clear with this? Yes. Okay. So you can copy it. Can we proceed to the next one? So in the second question, the first division, subdivision, we solved it. Second, it is easy. You can do it.
first of all you cannot do it empty pannu varu first when you do the first derivative itself you will get a zero second derivative empty pannu one more here so adanal da this problem alone you need to substitute uh, go with the definition of uh, modulus function okay next so let tell me what is the third problem so f of x is equal to sin of 2x or sin 2x sin of 2x plus 5 ah oh, done it okay so what is the question okay i'll take it as f of x is equal to sin of 2x plus 5 yeah so any guess what will be the answer let's see how much see all these things i'll i'll always teach you shortcuts because you have mcqs minimum value is 4 maximum value is 6 i'll tell you why listen to this sin 2x is less than or equal to 1 greater than or equal to minus 1 meaning sin of any angle you substitute it is always going to lie between minus 1 to 1 when you are adding 5 on both the sides minus 1 plus 5 is less than or equal to Sin 2x plus 5 is less than or equal to 1 plus 5. So this becomes 4 less than or equal to sin 2x plus 5 less than or equal to 6. This is the maximum value. This is the minimum value. That's it. But since you are expecting, if it comes in subjective, you need to prove it. Right? They expect you to apply the differentiation concept. For that, we will proceed with the derivative. Am I clear with this? Right. So, what is f dash of x? It is two cos two x, right? So, if I equate it to zero, I get cos of two x is equal to zero. Okay, cos two x is equal to zero. So, cos of something is equal to zero. That something should be an odd multiple of pi by two. It should be an odd multiple of pi by two. But our objective is not to find the value of two x. Rather, we need the critical points in name of x. So what I should do is take the two to the other side. X will be equal to two n plus one into pi by four. So we are plugging in different values of n to get different values of x, where there is a possibility of maxima and minima. So what we will do is we will take one cycle into consideration. Within that, we'll try to find the points where you have maxima and minima. The same thing will get repeated for other cycles as well. Okay. So listen. When I say one cycle, no, it is between zero to two pi. Right? It is between zero to two pi. If it is only sine x. So listen to the next logic. Whenever the angle is multiplied with a number the graph will get shrinked meaning what is this value this is 0 this is pi this is 2 pi listen if this is the graph for sin x if i make it sin 2x i am trying to say that this kind of a positive and a negative cycle will repeat twice between 0 to 2 pi meaning it will be like this am i clear so this is a graph for sin 2x suppose i make it as sin 3x what will happen so within 0 to 2 pi the graph is supposed to repeat itself thrice that is the meaning Four times I wrote the positive, negative, positive. Yeah. So it is thrice. 
Are able to understand? So this will be the graph for sine three x. So this number is very important. Suppose if that number becomes half, then what is the meaning of it? You will get only half a cycle between zero to two pi. Meaning you will have only an upper curve. Okay. See, nobody will ask you all these questions. That has no relation to how you are supposed to solve it theoretically. All that is given in textbook is do f dash of x, find the value, do f double dash of x, substitute the value, and finish your job. No. But sometimes what will happen is these kind of logical questions come by looking at the graph. You can say which one is the right thing. Okay. So as they are expecting more of critical thinking, I am explaining all these things. Please ensure it is registered. Am I clear with this? So this will help you in physics also. Those who are physics students, it will help you, especially in a chapter named wave optics. There we'll be dealing with trigonometry. That time it will help you. So coming back to the point, x is equal to two n plus one into three four is there? No, since the frequency here is two x, instead of taking between zero to two pi, I'll take it between zero to pi itself. Why? Because between zero to pi itself, whether it is sine two x or cos two x, whenever the frequency, whenever the angle is multiplied with a number, the frequency gets multiplied those many times. So since the frequency is two, so what I'll do is what I'll do is one cycle gets completed where if between zero to two pi you have two cycles, between zero to pi you will have one cycle. So what I will do is I will take the values of different pi by fours between zero to pi itself. So when I substitute n is equal to zero, what will I get the value of x as? I'll get x is equal to pi by four. When I substitute n is equal to one, I'll get the value of x as three pi by four. So pi by four is falling between zero to pi by two. Three pi by four is falling between pi by two to pi. These two values are sufficient for me to decide the minimum and the maximum value. Everything else will get multiplied with the. Everything else will get. Uh, repeating itself after a value of pi. So pi by four, three pi by four. Next will be pi pi by four, seven pi by four. It keeps on going like. This. So you check for one cycle. That is enough. Why I am mentioning this point is because I didn't write the particular solution. I wrote general solution. I hope you know what is the difference between particular and general. Pi by four and three pi by four are particular because they are fixed values. Two n plus one into pi by four is a general solution because I can substitute any value of n that I feel like. Am I clear with this? Right. So if f dash of x is going to be zero at x is equal to these values, what is f double dash of x? Derivative of this minus four sine two x minus four sine two x. So, if double dash of pi by four is how much? Minus four into sine of pi by two, because two into pi by four is pi by two. So, answer will be minus four. So, minus four is minus four is less than. So, it is less than zero. So, at x is equal to pi by four, what will you have? You will have the point of maximum. And if double dash of three pi by four. Minus four into sine of three pi by two. Answer will be plus four. It will be plus four. Okay. So this will be greater than zero. So at three pi by four, it is a point of minimum. Okay. Since you got x is equal to pi by four to be the point of maximum, and x is equal to three pi by four to be the point of minimum, take these values and substitute it as a function. Now tell me what is going to be the value of f of pi by four? I'll substitute it here. What is f of pi by four? Sine of two into pi by four is sine pi by two. What is sine pi by two? One. One plus five is going to give you six. What is f of three pi by four? Sine of three pi by two. Sine of three pi by two is minus one. So minus one plus pi will give you four. So the whole story of whatever you did here can be done like this also. Because what did I tell you in the beginning? The least value of sine two x is. What is the least value of sine two x? 
what is the maximum value of sin 2x plus 1 Clear with this? So, depending on where the problem is being asked, use that logic. If it comes in MCQ, don't waste this much of time. Just go with this method of inequality. Okay. If at all they ask in subjective, worth at least two to three marks, then you can sit and do this. Clear? Yes. Make a note. See, I hope you are able to get a grip of what is the difference between point of minimum and minimum value itself. Right? Who will decide the point of minimum? Second derivative. Who will decide the minimum value? Function value. So you need to take that value from the second. Uh, you need to take that critical point and substitute it in the function. Okay. So why I'm stressing on this point is here also you got minus four. Okay. Here it is plus four. Okay. So you should not get confused between these two numbers. Okay. Here with this. So for today, we'll stop with this. Next class, we'll do a few more problems. So those who are online, if you have any doubt, you can or ask else, or else we can wind up. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you.